If you left something at home which is important for the project, the whole project is gone. We had to get a private plane from Nassau over here because all the luggage and um, also the flight connections weren't really suitable for what we want to do. <laughs> it was horrible. You know, I, I hate packing. I hate it. So uh, we took a private plane um, and we uh, had a very good and um, quick connection from Germany um, to Elutra. Get a pack. So I knew we had a lot of gear, and all this stuff keeps coming out of this plane. Ah, oh, this plane. Was, the, the truck was completely filled up. So we kind of stuck two guys back there, and Florian and I in the cab, and come to the house. And you start unloading all this stuff, and it's just, it's just everywhere. I mean, it's just all over, everywhere. Staying with uh, Janice and Elle, who are wonderful and very warm uh, people welcoming us. Michael um, and Mario were coming a few days later and so Mace, Christian and me, we had time together with Elle to set up everything and once we laid out all the equipment on Elle's porch <laughs> I thought like okay that needs some serious planning otherwise, <laughs> otherwise we, we completely lose track of everything. So we made lists, we talked about everything, what do we have to prepare and who is responsible for what, you know Mace was branding the cars, Christian was checking the drone, um, Al and me were fixing chumsicles and uh, 360 cameras and underwater cameras and then slowly step by step checking all the boxes on the list and then in the end of the day we, we had everything to be ready for the next day to go out underwater and test everything. Well, the idea is to have something that attracts the sharks. So we use a five gallon bucket and we suspend this in the center of the bucket and then we fill it up the bucket with pieces of, of fish. The idea with this piece of equipment is that the pieces on the inside uh, the sharks can't get to. They can get to this stuff on the outside fairly quickly but this piece in the inside stays frozen so it keeps around so you get your chum sickle that will last for instead of five minutes, it'll last anywhere from 30 minutes to an hour. So you get plenty of opportunity to dive and interact with the sharks. on the island it looks like that. Oh it's a truck. That's Janice's truck by the way. She has the coolest truck on the island. <laughs> <laughs> now the only thing we have to worry about is if we're going or coming back and it's raining these guys are sitting in the back seat they might get wet. But that's life on an island you know. One of a kind. One of a kind. We thought a lot about how we are gonna do the actual maneuver uh, in the water. I mean if you're a diver you realize or you have the experience maybe before that uh, you have great plans when you're on the boat but once you're in the water and you're not able to talk you know everything changes. Can you change the volume? It's pretty, 
<laughs> Pretty well. I don't know if you, if you have to change the wallet or if you have to change the wallet. Yeah. I think I only control my volume, but how's that? Is that better? It's still very loud and clear, but it's going to be fine in the water, I guess. Well, I don't have any controls here to change your volume, so you're going to have to figure out how to, <laughs> to change your volume on your own. <laughs> Check one, two. I can hear both of you. Oh, awesome. Good. Done. Next. Great. Great. Al, I, I checked that for you, okay? <laughs> Thanks, boy. Shopping is done. Yeah. Look, it's not even one o'clock, and look at all the things we've got checked off already. How <laughs> about the car branding, Mason? Yeah, it's in process. Christian, did you have anything done? Everything is running. was to move the sharks to more shallow water because usually the sharks uh, show up in like 20 meters of depth and we thought it might be impossible to have a pole long enough to actually do it on the shark side so uh, Al was coming up with the idea to move the sharks from the deeper location to the more shallow water and the first day we went out on the water <clears throat> we went to that location and tested the pole and we found out very quick that the depth of 10 meter is actually not enough to get that really nice and extended underwater feeling uh, in the shot itself in the end and that was kind of the biggest uh, drawback it was not only that it was very difficult to move the sharks from one place to the other because you would obviously lose some of the sharks and you would end up with maybe two three four five sharks which is not uh, not enough um, for us and so we thought okay if there is any way that we can accomplish all that in deeper water 20 meters uh, of, of depth that would be much better I think Sunday or Monday morning I called Florian I was like hey what's going on are you there uh, are you already testing and figuring out how all that stuff works and Florian said everything is fine but we have to change the whole concept uh, we do it with a 20 meters pole uh, we had all the spare parts with us and I, but on the telephone I was like what are you talking about 20 meters that's ridiculous you know we, we calculated all every, all the, the different parts of the pole the weight and everything the weight of the camera blah blah to be sure that the drone is able to lift the whole thing up and then on the telephone he tells me we, we're just gonna double that we didn't know whether the magnet was strong enough, we didn't know whether the, the drone was strong enough. Um, yeah, but we had to give it, a, give it a try. And the first day out on the water testing all that um, was, I would say, the most interesting day because we learned a lot.